Hello and welcome to the first video in a series of tutorials on how to use the C++ programming language. My name is Duncan, this channel is called Out of My Laboratory, and as I said, the next several videos will be demonstrating aspects of the C++ programming language and how to use them to solve uh, programming problems, uh, how to accomplish certain things if you're writing your own program, or also how to understand C++ code if you're just trying to uh, understand what a program is doing. Um, before you can get started working with C++ too much, you have to, uh, or it's strongly recommended that you install a compiler so that you can actually write and execute your own C++ code. Without a compiler, the C++ code looks just like a normal text file to a computer. A compiler is a program that will take the C++ code in the traditional uh, sense of the word code and convert it into something that your computer or your machine can understand, so sort of machine uh, machine executable file. So I've prepared a video with instructions on how to install a compiler uh, if you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC or um, if you're on a Linux you probably already have one but I mention it in the video anyway. Um, so you can follow this link to go view that video to set up, get your compiler set up. Uh, as I said, without a compiler you won't be able to write your own programs. Um, and so you could still understand how to use C++ by just watching the videos, but I highly recommend that you actually write out the code and try things out on your own to actually learn how to use C++ to make uh, your very own programs. So, um, uh, when one usually learns a programming language, the first program that is written out is the Hello World program. So I'm about to write that out. Uh, before I do that, a quick note on um, what I'm using here. I'm using TextEdit, um, and because that's the most simple uh, text editor available on a Mac, and all of these videos do take place on a Mac system because that's what I'm using. Um, I use TextEdit just because it's sort of the simplest text editor, so whether you're using uh, a similar text editor, like say Notepad if you're on Windows, or some kind of command line editor if you're on a uh, Linux machine, or something much more sophisticated like maybe Xcode or Code Blocks or something like that. Those are called IDEs or Integrated Development Environments and they will sort of have features to make programming easier for you. Uh, but for these tutorials I'm just using TextEdit because that's what, that way whether you're using a IDE or something simple like this you can still understand um, and in some ways relate to the tutorials. If you are using TextEdit or another uh, text editor that is not necessarily designed for C++ code um, or code in general, it's important that you uh, make sure that you're typing in plain text and not rich text uh, because uh, with rich text when you save the file it might input certain formatting characters which are going to confuse your compiler. So you have to make sure that you're typing in plain text um, and not not formatted text. So if you're using an IDE like Xcode or whatever, you don't have to worry about this. So I usually increase the font size just to make things easier to see, but that's not necessary at all for your C++ program. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write out the program as it is now, and um, then I will compile and run the program to show you what it does, and then explain um, each line after we've written out the program. So this code will be the same if you're using Mac, PC, or Linux. Um, the, the actual C++ code is the same. Um, if you're looking at some tutorials for uh, Windows, you may see um, a, a line like this, system pause, uh, something like that. You may see that if you're looking at other tutorials for uh, the Windows system. This is just a way of pausing the program execution. I kind of uh, I will not be using that because it's not necessary for Macs and it's not really necessary for Windows and so I kind of suggest that you get away from using that if you can um, but it's it's a pretty common thing I figured I should mention it anyway here's our hello world program so hopefully this will output hello world to the screen I'm now going to save uh, this source code as a .cpp file which is the uh, typical uh, way of denoting that this file is a C++ file, but uh, at the basis it's just a um, plain text file with a particular extension to denote that it's a C++, um, C++ source file. So I've now opened up Terminal because that's how I'm going to access the compiler. Again, this may be a different process if you're not using the same setup as me, though this is how I will 
be doing it for all the tutorials. And um, you can find terminal, if you're in Finder, you can find terminal in the uh, utilities folder in your applications or you can just find it using spotlight like I did like I did there or you put it in your dock I don't know a number of things so now I'm going to type CD desktop which is uh, this is not anything to do with C++ this is just about using the terminal and um, if you'd like to know more about how to use the terminal or the bash language as it's called I've had I have a series on how to uh, do some basic things in that environment so you can feel free to watch those but um, in any case, on with the show, let's go ahead and compile our file. I'm going to type G++ hyphen O, hello world, this is the name of your executable, and then the name of your source file, in this case, hello world.cpp. The name of your executable can be anything you want, but I like to name it the same as the source file, uh, just to keep things organized. So if you run this command by pushing enter, um, and by the way, your terminal might not look exactly the same as mine. For instance, mine has colors like this and whatnot, but don't worry about that. Everything should be the same um, as long as you save the file to your desktop. That's what's going on there. In any case, you push return to execute that command, and that will compile your file. If you're getting an error that the G++ command is not found, that means your compiler is not installed, so you need to go follow the instructions as per the number zero video uh, in this series. So now that we've compiled the program, the uh, C++ code has been changed into an executable file. Um, so if you're actually looking at your desktop, you can see this executable file on the desktop, um, and you could either open it from there to run it, or you can run it straight from the terminal by typing dot slash hello world. So that will execute the program, and you see now we get the output hello world. So fantastic. I will now proceed to explain what's going on in this program, though I must tell you that this will be a somewhat elementary explanation because uh, we don't know very much about any aspects of this program, but we will be getting much more in depth within the uh, in the following several tutorials. So the first line here, include IOStream with a hash mark at the beginning. This is what's called a preprocessor directive, which is somewhat complicated sounding. All that means is it's not really an executable line of code. It's more of a note to the compiler, and that's denoted by the uh, hash mark here. Uh, basically all that's happening here is we're telling the compiler that this program is going to be using the IOStream library. The reason we have to do this is because the cout and endl objects that we use down here are contained in the iostream library. Now you don't have to install the iostream library separate from your compiler. If you've downloaded and installed a compiler, you will have the iostream library. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, you don't have to download anything extra. And we'll talk more about different libraries you can use uh, in later videos. The next line is somewhat optional actually, using namespace std. All this is going to do is save us a bit of typing. Um, in the iostream library, these objects, cout and endl, are actually named inside the namespace std. So this means that their explicit name would be std colon colon std colon colon. And this, uh, this means they're in the standard namespace. The reason that it's set up like this is because if you were uh, going to use the cout and endl objects in your own program, but maybe for some reason you had a variable or something that you wanted to name cout. You can't have two different uh, objects have the same name, so iostream has the courtesy of naming the cout object inside the std namespace. Um, most of the time, I will just type using namespace std because I'm not going to have a have a variable named cout, so I have no need to have um, to have to type out std colon colon every time, but if you want, you don't actually need that line, and you could the program will execute compile and execute fine um, like that. But I will be using that in almost every tutorial, and we'll talk more about namespaces later again. Okay, now we arrive at the meat of the program. This is uh, what's called the main function. We'll talk more about functions later, um, but every C++ program must have a main function, and that's where the execution of the program begins. So um, from the main function, you might be diverging off to, uh, sorry, diverting off to a different function to call some different bit of code or something like that, but every program, every C++ program starts execution at the top of the main function, and this is called a block. Um, this um, 
little encapsulation via these uh, curly braces, that's called a block. So we have int main, that's how you denote that this is the main function. Um, you type int and then main. Sometimes there will be things inside these parentheses. In this case, uh, I've left them out because they're not necessary. So it's just an open and closed parentheses with nothing in between. And then we have a have a block encapsulated by these curly braces where we have a bit more code. So here's what actually gets executed. Oh, and by the way, since I forgot to mention it, a lot of lines in C++ will have this semicolon at the end, and it's actually a vital part of uh, of of the actual code. Um, that denotes that that's the end of that line of executable code. Now, if you look at something like you know this curly brace, that doesn't have an, a semicolon at the end because that's more of a encapsulation thing. That's not an executable line. But in this case, this is actually an executable line. So what's happening here? You can probably guess. Um, we have C out, which is pronounced C out, by the way, because it has to do with output. Um, and then this is called the stream insertion operator, which uh, it's not necessarily that you know that. But basically what happens is the hello world um, text um, is fed into our C out object, which will take care of outputting um, that to the screen. So you'll see this kind of a theme of C++ where sort of exceedingly complicated things happen behind the scenes and so on the surface it can look quite simple and that's something that I personally kind of like about C++ that it's set up in that way um, that you can do that and you can actually do this on a more custom level when we learn more things later but don't worry about that all that's happening here is hello world is being taken um, and you know sort of fed into the C out uh, object which will take care of outputting it to the screen Next, the end L object is fed into C out, and all that that's doing is um, basically adding a return on the end. So if we took this off, and I can go ahead and do that, again the semicolon is important, but I'm going to save the file and then recompile it. Uh, by the way, I'm using the up and down arrows to go to a previous command in the terminal, which is something I will do frequently to recompile. Um, and now you see it says hello world, but instead of uh, looking nice and clean and having a return at the end before the uh, terminal prompt begins again it just sort of runs right together and so it looks rather messy and so I like to have an end L there though it is I mean ultimately optional and uh, you know another thing this doesn't have to be hello world this could be something else it could be welcome to C++ or something and then um, if you wanted you could have another another C outline where you say this is a program or something like that. And again, with the end L. Uh, you may have to change your autocorrect settings in TextEdit to stop it from correcting this to an, to end, um, but I mean, you can find that TextEdit preferences, and then you have to uncheck some of these boxes, but I don't want to get too much into that because not everybody will be using TextEdit. So now if I, if I uh, execute the Hello World program, now we have two lines of output, Welcome to C++, and this is a program. So you can kind of understand that anything that's in these quotes is not really part of the C++ language. That's more of a, um, I don't know, something, else. It's, it's a string literal is what it's actually called. And so whatever is between the quotes is going to get outputted when we feed it into C out. The last line that I have to talk about is the return zero line. It's not strictly necessary that you have this line, though it's definitely good practice to have. What it indicates to the system is that the program executed um, as expected. It executed sort of successfully. So if this was a more complicated program, maybe you were going to be loading in files or something like that, and you wanted to, w and, and um, say you failed to load one of the files because it didn't, it, it wasn't named properly or something like that. You might return with a with a non-zero exit status to indicate to the system that uh, something went wrong. Things did not go as expected. Um, the program will compile and run just fine without the return zero here, but it's good practice and a good habit to get into to have it there. And again, again the semicolon is necessary there as well as on the output lines. So that's basically it. That's your overview of how the Hello World program works. Again, we'll be talking a lot more in depth about how to, you know, work with output and input and variables and repeating bits of code or different functions, something like that. It all gets 
very complicated, but in my opinion, very exciting. So I commend you for taking the opportunity to educate yourself on how to use the C++ programming language. I hope you enjoy the next several videos. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you, as I said, in the next several videos. Thanks.